All right, so in this video, we're going to look at drawing and digitizing in ArcGIS Pro. So I'm going to show you how to uh, read in some reference data to create a new um, file to draw into, and then just some simple um, you know, drawing methods. All right, so the first thing we want to do is add in some images to draw over. So your options are to um, use some of the existing base map data. For example, you could you know, pull in Esri's imagery here or connect to some other service. You could download some data and read it in as data layers, or you could connect to some like third-party service. So what we're going to do is connect to some imagery that's made available by the West Virginia GIS Tech Center. Okay, so um, this URL, this or this website, it lists the the uh, services provided by the West Virginia GIS Tech Center. And to connect to those, you just simply use this URL. Okay, so to do to actually connect to that, you have to go to Insert, and then Connections, and then we'll do New ArcGIS Server because that's what this is and add that in. Note you don't have to provide a username or password for this because it doesn't require one, but some services may, and you, you know, obviously have to have those credentials. So we hit OK there. And if it disappears, that generally means it connected to it without an issue. So then I'm going to go to Map, and then Add Data. And now instead of looking on our local drive, we're going to grab this layer from our server connections. And there's our server connections. And then the data we're looking for is in imagery and base maps and West Virginia imagery, JSX Center, leaf off mosaic. We'll hit OK. And that might take a few, a little, a few, like a minute or so to draw in. Okay, so while that's working, let's go to, let's start building a layer to write into. So to do that, we want to go, I'm going to go to view, and then, oh, I guess i got to wait. <laughs> um, generally, once the services load in, they're pretty quick, yeah, but it might take a minute for it to, to, to actually load in. Oh, there we go. All right, so there's the service. You can see it's different um, data sets for each county, different collected on different uh, years. All right, so there's our data. Uh, our, our reference data. So now we want to go to insert, sorry, view, and then catalog view, and that opens up the catalog. And we're going to go to databases, and um, we could just write into the default, but just for the heck of it, I'll show you how to make a new one. So you want to do new file geodatabase and store it someplace. And I'll put this in our video folder here, and we'll call it digitizing example two. Save. Okay, and that should add in a new file geodatabase. So that's again specifically in a file geodatabase structure. So it's a proprietary um, Esri file format. Okay, so if we go into this geodatabase. You'll see nothing's there because we haven't made any layers yet. So before I make any layers, I want to um, create a domain so I have co some control over what people can enter into fields. So to do that, I'm going to click on Domains. And then this allows us to build a domain. So the first domain that we're going to call Building Type. And you can provide a description. We'll say Categories of buildings. And we're going to leave it at text. It's a coded values domain because we want codes assigned to categories. And we're going to make up some categories. So we'll do zero will be commercial. One will be public. And then two will be residential. Okay, enter there. So those are our categories. Um, so it was 0, 1, 2, and commercial, public, residential. And with te it's coded value, text. So we'll hit save, save that in. 
And let's do, uh, um, we'll just call, call it condition. And let's say condition of structure. And then we'll make this one an, uh, an integer type. So let's do short. And now we want to change it to range domain. And we'll do 0 to 5. So basically someone can rate the condition of the structure there from 0 to 5. It has to be a whole number. And something it didn't like. Let me hit enter and save. Okay, cool. So there's our two domains. So we get rid of that now. So if we go back into the catalog and go into this, we can actually um, add a layer now. So I'm going to do new and then feature class. And we're going to call it buildings. And we can give it an alias, which is just a nicer name. It's not really necessary. Just made it capitalized. Polygon, and we'll get rid of the Z and M. We don't really need those. And next, um, we're going to make a couple fields. So we're going to have a type field for the building type. And that's going to be text. And then we're going to have a condition field. And that's going to be a short integer. All right, so those are two new fields, and then these are just default fields that uh, are made you know, by default. And then we'll hit Next. And now it wants us to pick a projection. Um, I'm going to set it to UTM, Net83, 17 North. It's a common projection in West Virginia. And we'll hit Next. And this is tolerance and the minimum distance between coordinates before they're considered equal. So I generally just leave that as a default. So effectively, if two coordinates are closer than that distance, then they'll just be merged as one. Um, and then, and then yeah, we'll just leave the, that the same too. So we'll hit next, and the configuration is fine. So we'll hit finish. All right, so then it leaves us with um, this. Uh, so that's the uh, that that's the new file. Nothing's in there yet, but it's ready to be written into. Uh, before we start to write to it, I just wanted to add um, could actually use those domains. So I'm going to go in here and I want to do design and then open up the fields menu. And then I wanted to assign those domains we created at the database level to these two fields to the, in this specific table. So for the type, we're going to still assign to the building type, and the condition, we're going to assign to condition. And note that it only will accept um, domains that are set up to be the same type, so te text and then integer values. And we'll hit Save there. OK, so now we should have our layer, and we have our domain specified. All right, so now we're going to click on this layer and do Add to Map. Okay, and now we're just going to do some simple drawing. Um, I'm not going to do anything real complicated or fancy. I'm just going to show you how to... Um, we'll just use the Morgantown area because I'm familiar with it. Okay, so let's... Uh, let's start off by... Uh, let's digitize some of these buildings up here. Okay, so to start digitizing, we need to be in editing mode, which you probably already are. We'll, we'll say create. And if we click on this building object, then we have tools here to draw. So this is just freehand draw or drawing where you add vertices and it connects them up. This auto fills, this is just right angles, a circle, ellipse, freehand. So there's lots of tools here for drawing. I'm going to grab this right angles tool. So since we're drawing buildings, probably want to be just draw at right angles. Um, I'm going to draw in, let's see here, I want to know where stuff actually, what things actually are up here. Um, so this is target. So let's just draw in target. So and note now that once I've made two vertices, it'll only let me do right angles.
and then we'll we'll close it. So there we have a feature. Now if we want to edit the attributes, we can just go into attributes and it should show you the attributes for whatever you have clicked on. Note it's automatically filling in the area and the length. So this is, this is a polygon, the length is the perimeter and it's in the map unit, so it's in meters and this is the, the area in meters. The condition, we can pick from our domains now. So I'm gonna just, this is a commercial property. I realized I spelled that wrong, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then condition, see if I put in like seven, it should say that's invalid because it is not within the domain range, so we'll put in five. There we go. And we'll do apply. All right, so there we've up updated that. All right, so um, again, let's just, I'm just gonna show you some quick drawing tips. Um, I'm not really gonna draw anything useful, really useful here. I just wanna show you some, some tricks. So I'm just gonna draw a, sh a shape. So let me go back to create feature and I'm gonna just use the polygon tool here. I'm just gonna draw a shape. So there's a shape. So let's say that I wanted to split this shape into two. Okay, so to do that, you can use this split tool. Okay. So basically you just have to draw a line that splits it in some way. And then when you double click, it splits it and now it's two separate features. So if I wanted to say like delete this part of it, I can click on it and delete it. So I find split to be useful. Merge is useful if you have, so let me do a, so I just added that back in. So now I'm gonna select both of these. And if I do merge, This is what it's going to do with the attributes, which is fine. So I'm going to click Merge, and it merges them, and it gets so basically back to where we started in terms of the geometry. The Move may allows you to move it, so we can actually move it through space. So I just moved it a little. Um, if we click on Edit Vertices, go in here, we have to click on the feature we want and then edit vertices. We can actually move the vertices around. Should be able to add vertices. So I just right click there to add a vertice. Right click, add vertice. So you can add, I think you should be able to delete. So if we do delete vertice, got rid of it. So that's for you know editing individual vertices. Um, let me do this. Let me pull this window up here. Oh, that's what I'm after. There we go. So you see there's a bunch of tools here. Let's just look at a few others. There's some that are pretty complicated, like for example, drawing in 3D and stuff, which we're not gonna get into. Um, I find that I generally use a lot of the simple ones. Let's look at rotate, for example. So this allows you to like rotate along an axis. You can even move the point of rotation, I believe, maybe not. Yeah, I guess you can't. Um, anyway, so that's rotating kind of in the middle there. Scale changes the size. So um, it's going to maintain the shape, but change the size. So I'm just going to... So we can zoom in and out there. And again, just hit enter to accept that change. Um, anyway, so these are some simple drawing tools. So we looked at merge and split and edit vertices and move and rotate and scale. Um, another option which can be useful is, well, let's look at if we had multi-part features. So what I'm going to do is draw, I'm going to go back to this. I'm just going to draw a couple separated separate features. Okay, so there I have um, five polygons. So now I'm going to select all of them. And right now there are five separate records. But what I would like to do is merge them into a single object. Um, believe I can do that in here. I don't, let me see, edit vertices, 
this. This is single part to multi, or I might actually be wrong about that in this case. Actually, I may be wrong. I don't know if you can do that in here. Never mind. I thought you could do that, but I, oh, actually, here's ex I guess if we do, I guess it is merge. So let's try that. So we'll do merge. Okay, cool. So sorry, it was just merge. So if I do clear now, if I just select one of these, they all get selected because this is just a single feature now. It's a multi-part feature. So it's a single record in the table made up of multiple pieces. And then if I wanted to convert them back into separate pieces, then I can go to explode, I believe, to do that. Explode. And let's see what this does. So we'll do explode. Okay. So now if I click on one of these, now they're back to being individual features. So that's a way you could do like multi-part features, single part features. Um, let's say you, you wanted to have like an interior ring in something. So to do that, you can do it with the split tool. So you just want to have an interior area here. And sometimes this doesn't really want to connect. Well, it did that time. I've had issues where it's just like doesn't want to complete. So now I actually have two separate objects here. And now if I take this one and delete it, I basically have an inner missing ring there. Um, so that's actually useful. Again, I'm just trying to show you some tools that can be useful for, for cleaning stuff up. I believe that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. I guess the other thing that might be worth mentioning is topo uh, topology. So you can set up rules for topology. Right now I don't have any, um, but that can you can use that to you know, make things line up better or not have any overlap. If you're doing like planimetric or you know, data that is going to have rules like that, so for example, like road networks, you can define those rule sets. Um, but that's probably more than we need to get into for a remote sensing class. I think the main thing is that you know how to like create new layers and draw into layers and edit the attribute tables. Um, you know, for example, for doing things like collecting training data.